Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about NFTs issued or more or less implemented on the XRP ledger. So the first thing to like to highlight here is a tweet done by uh, so uh, posted by David Schwartz. So he's saying that building on the standards proposed by XRP Labs, so that's uh, these are the makers of the XUM app or XUM app, I hope I pronounce it properly. So I would also recommend to download that one here. Uh, based on his proposal um, and used by devs today, I've proposed functionality that would provide as support for NFTs on the XOP ledger. So there is an issue created here, so we've got a discussion here. And that's just a proposal by XOP Labs, how you could implement NFTs on the XOP ledger. And right, and that it's pretty cool that David Force himself was like highlighting and talk highlighting that and talking about that. It's pretty cool. And right, so obviously it's not being implemented immediately and it's gonna take a while and also until that amendment is in place, it will take some time. Uh, also some specs and some details have to be like um determined before so they will have to think about all of this properly so I didn't really look that closely <coughs> into the current proposal itself but it's pretty cool that David Schwartz himself is talking about that and also highlighting it and also right so here also okay it's the, there's a post by Ripple, Ripple X so also developer platform uh, platform uh, where there so there's an own own website called Ripple Accelerator Portal or on that website you can just look into all get all the developer tools and things like that but it's still loading then right so if we just go back so right so it's just gonna take some time until all of this is implemented but there's huge potential so I am so this is the first time I'm ever highlighting it on my channel I am not a financial advisor and right this is just a pure entertainment channel but the thing here is so what are the, how are NFTs currently like how can you use them currently and the thing here is that they often so NFTs do exist on the Ethereum network but they are a catastrophe so the uh, there's one very like big website it's open sea and uh, if we just go into the website, so the simplest, the easiest thing I, I always like to do is like going to my own profile because it, uh, in the recent days I wanted to try to, so I'm going to use MetaMask to log in. I just have to change the network to the Ethereum mainnet, log myself in, and I entered it incorrectly. Okay, there we go. So I do not have Ethereum at all on, on that. But if I'd like to create my own NFT on that website, so I did. I was just trying to create my own NFT here. And if I want to do that, so uh, if I go to sell probably, right? If I'm here, so I upload a picture and want to create an NFT of that and post that. So let's, now it's gonna get interesting here. So if we try to do that, so we can see uh, Ethereum is loading and let's check out the juicy transaction fee. So you can see here, to allow OpenSea to sell items in your account, you must first complete a free, free plus gas transaction. So this one is supposed to be free. So obviously I have to pay the gas. But now let's check out the gas fees on the firm network. So this one wants to charge me 41 bucks for a simple transaction and that is just a catastrophe. So current the current gas fees are an absolute joke. So it's not usable. I, I don't know. So maybe people like take huge profits and think like, yeah, they can they can afford that. but to, in all seriousness, there will, nobody's gonna buy an item for uh, like which is like less than one hundred dollars worth with an NFT because you pay like for all these low value transactions, you still pay forty dollars uh, transaction fee. And that's just just insane. So if we just t take a random NFT here, so all these prices are here at zero point nine nine Ethereum ETH, so it's rather high. But also for like small NFTs, it, so if we, if we'd like, we can check out like an NFT which is cheap, like that one for example. It's still cheap, but still so you can see in four. How much is that? I would have to quickly check ETH Euro. So I'm, I'm gonna oh well rather ETH USDT or USD rather. Can we quickly translate it? Nope, we can't. But still, like 0.04% of that, well, let's quickly do that, 556 times 004. So, okay, yes, it's $102, but still, uh, $102 plus $40 transaction fee, and that's just insane. So, yeah, so this, for all, all, is this one for free? No, it probably has no bits, I guess. Nope, 
average price, so it's also pretty low. But again, you have to pay the transaction fee, and that is just crazy. So that's why NFTs are... N so I know the film network wants lower these fees. They were tried with the first upgrade thing. It was the Berlin upgrade, where they tried to lower these, but it wasn't really lowered anyway. And they are also trying obviously to start Ethereum 2.0, which is based on proof of stake. But still, so if the if the status quo we've got currently, it's just unusable. Or well, I don't want to use it because it's just expensive to do. And now imagine having NFTs on the XRP ledger where you only pay, like I said, 12 drops, which is just compared to that is crazy or insanely good. Uh, right, so it's it's just a matter of time until they implement it, and hope, I hope they are able to do it successfully, but I'm sure they will. And then the other process which has to pass is as far, I hope I'm not uh, saying that in incorrectly. The other thing is then, then it has to pass on the amendment voting. So they're going to make an amendment, some change for supporting NFTs. And each validator of the DUNL for of these 37 validators which matter, uh, they have to vote on it. So, for example, if we just go again, which was one thing I like to talk about a lot is the crypto conditions suite. And uh, we can see here that all of these validators, here 25 of those, are voting for it. And as soon as the threshold is being met, so as soon as 29 validators are voting for it, this feature gets enabled. So we need 80% consensus, so it works. So, right, so I hope all of that happens. Uh, I'm also quite optimistic about this being implemented quite soon. There's also, uh, this is N. Bugalis, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He, you can also follow him on Twitter. So, and right, so there is the specification. And we can also see if there's anything else we can look into here. But it's cool that they have, they have been mentioning it. And uh, right, so yeah, okay, there is another developer who's also saying that it's that it's well done. So it didn't look that good into it, and somebody who's also apparently XRPL and NFT creator. Oh cool. It's a project that do have to check out. So we'll be looking into it later. And uh, right, so it's just a matter of time, hopefully until they do this. So there are some follow-up questions here. Right, so the transferring fees work. Right, so there, there's lots of stuff which has to be figured out, but anyway, anyways, I do hope that this gets obviously implemented quite soon. So, but we will definitely see, and right, this is going to be a great addition to the XRP ecosystem. And yep, that was it, I just want to briefly address that, so it is because since it's like, the f well, it's like the first time in a long time, David Schwartz has been talking about it, I think, and that's why I wanted to highlight it and also talk about that. So, thank you for watching and see you in, see you in the next video.